Hey, what's up? David here from Dignited. Today, I want to show you my top 10 settings that you should change on your Redmi smartphone. All right, let's get into it. All right, the first thing that I usually look out for on a smartphone is always on display. Now, this feature keeps your lock screen on either with a clock or a calendar or battery usage or notifications. I like this feature because I don't always have to unlock my phone to have a quick glance on what's happening on my phone. All right, it's right here. Have the time here, the date and the battery usage. And if notifications come through, I can always, you know, have a quick glance at them. All right, so if you want to enable always on display on your Redmi uh, smartphone, just simply come to settings here, okay? And then come to always on and lock screen right here, okay? And then come to always on right here, and then you can enable it. Uh, you can also customize it with a theme, a signature here. You can choose an analog clock, or you can, you know, go with a digital clock. And you can also set the background if you like. All right, the next thing that you can change on your Redmi smartphone is the refresh rate. Now, refresh rate is a big deal on smartphones. A higher refresh rate offers a smoother browsing and gaming experience, but at the cost of battery life. The standard refresh rate on most smartphones is 60 hertz. And this has been so for a very long time, but now smartphones are offering 90 hertz and even up to 120 hertz. So my Redmi Note 12 has refresh rate up to 120 hertz. And if you want to change the refresh rate on your Redmi smartphone, simply come to settings right here again. Okay. And then tap on display right here. Okay. And then come to refresh rate right here. Yeah. So my default is 60 hertz because I don't want it to have a dent on my battery. But if you're gaming, for example, then you can set it to 120 hertz or 90 hertz or whatever refresh rate your Redmi smartphone has. Awesome. All right, the next thing that you can change on your Redmi smartphone is actually hiding the notch. Now, the notch has always been a controversial feature on smartphones until it probably isn't right now. My Redmi Note 12 5G comes with a little punch hole camera here, which works as a notch but I'm not really bothered by it. However, if you're really into changing the notch and how it works, simply come to settings here, okay? And then tap on display, all right? And then come to control center right here. Okay, and then right down here, you can tap on hide the notch, okay? So mine is not hidden by default, but if I choose to hide it, you can see how the status bar is right now. It's just a, a black bar right there, okay? But I think I don't like that, okay? Yeah, so if you're bothered by the notch, you can always hide it. The next thing that you can change on your Redmi smartphone is the default SIM cards and mobile networks. Now, I have a dual SIM Redmi, and I have two SIM cards here, I have MTN and Airtel, and either networks are really good at different things. For example, MTN is really good at voice calls, whereas Airtel is good at data. So if you want to set how uh, the SIM cards behave by default, simply come to settings, come to SIM card and mobile networks right here, okay? And you can see here the networks that are pre-configured on your phone. I have Airtel and MTN here. And you can choose what you, which SIM card you want for uh, calls by default, all right? You can choose either SIM card 1 or SIM card 2. So since I'm changing SIM card 2, I'm just going to set 2 here. And for data, I usually go with Airtel, and that is SIM card 1 right there, okay? Yeah. The next thing that you can tweak on your Redmi smartphone is how the control center looks like. Now, when I switched from my OnePlus 9 smartphone to a Redmi smartphone, one of the surprises I encountered was how the control center works on Redmi smartphones or on the Mi UI. So by default, most Android users expect that, uh, you know, swiping down or pulling down from the status bar, you kind of get your notifications and quick settings, but it doesn't work like that on the new Mi UI. 
okay this one has two areas the left okay which shows the notifications and the right which pulls up quick settings or the control center okay so at first i was actually really confused because i expected uh when i swipe down i expected both but this is not the case so if you want to change this behavior okay go to settings again here all right come to notifications and control center right here okay scroll down to control center style right here tap on it and now you have the two various control center styles you have the new version and the old version this old version here behaves exactly as you expect on most android phones which is you pull down and you have the quick settings and notifications and this new one here has the two areas the left and the right okay all right now the next thing that you can do and tweak on your redmi smartphone is how notifications work now for your own sanity and mental health this is probably one of the th settings that you want to customize it will reduce the tsunami on notifications and it will vastly improve on your mental health and productivity to turn off notifications or to tweak how they work simply come to settings again here okay then come to notifications and control center right here okay and then come to app notifications right here now from here you can see all my social apps here telegram uh, whatsapp you have gmail there you have photos you have all sorts of apps here right some have turned off here some are still on now you have two ways of uh, setting notifications you have this global option here or you can go to the app itself and set up notifications and configure how notifications work on per app basis right so if you like want to turn off all whatsapp notifications regardless of the notification uh, settings in the app itself just simply toggle that right so this is going to turn off all whatsapp notifications just like that right so if you want a more fine grained control here just tap on the individual app and now here you can just select how the notifications work you can choose to allow only the floating notifications you can choose to allow notification badges you can choose to allow playing sound or not vibrate or not and so forth right so you have a fine grained control how notifications work awesome now related to that you can further tweak how your smartphone filters notifications via digital well-being so you can access digital well-being by going to settings here and then you have digital well-being right here right okay so of course you have you know the default analytics of your uh, usage per application and then right here have bedtime mode which i really like and you can turn it on right here okay or set it up so for me i set it up so that it grays out my phone by midnight and then it turns it on in the morning right here and also you have other options of focus mode here for example if you have a serious work schedule you can you know set up when to block certain apps at what time right so you have that as well all right the next feature that you may want to set up is private dns server okay now if you want to make your internet go even faster then you may want to consider swapping the default dns server that comes pre-configured on your phone when you connect to a mobile network or to a wi-fi hotspot for example to something more fine-grained something faster now dns or domain name system is like the address book of the internet which helps translate human readable domain names such as google.com or deglater.com to machine readable formats called ip addresses or internet protocol addresses so the faster this resolution is the faster your internet will feel like right okay so if you want to change the default dns then come to settings right here then connection and sharing right here then you have private dns right here okay 
So as you can see, I've set it up to Google's public DNS, which is DNS.google. But you have options from Cloudflare. You have options from um, IBM, I believe, and various other providers, right? Yeah. The other thing that you want to do is to set up backup on your smartphone. Now, since your smartphone is mobile and is always with you, then chances of it getting damaged or stolen are really, really high. So you need to have plan B. So to set up backup, simply come to settings again, then come to the Google option down here. All right. Then come to all services, then tap on backup right here. So if you have a Gmail account, then you have 15 GB of free storage across Google products and services, right? Uh, but if you run out of space, then you can always buy more space from Google One. I think it starts from $2 per month for up to 100 GB, which is actually my plan right now. So it will back up your apps, photos and videos, SMS and MMS, call history, device settings, and your Google account data. And you can choose to back up over Wi-Fi or over mobile data right here. And you can also just choose to back up right now if it's not already backed up, right? So this is really critical. If I lost this phone or if it fell down and got damaged, very easy. I just have to buy a new Android phone, sign up with my Gmail account, and all my settings, all my apps, all my photos will just pull back in and it will look like I didn't really lose anything. So this is critical, right? Now, Xiaomi has its own um, storage option here. If you go back here and then come to Xiaomi account, you should be able to see uh, the Xiaomi Cloud, this one right here, okay? And they also have uh, the same options here, I think up to 5 GB of storage where they can back up your messages, contacts, call history, notes, calendar, and so forth, right? So since I'm already on Google, I kind of just ignore this. Great. All right, related to backup is a setting called Find My Device. Yeah, this is another plan B, just in case your phone gets stolen. It may not really help you recover a lost phone, because the thief could easily just remove the SIM card, reset, whatever. But at least it will enable you remotely lock and swipe up data on your phone, preventing thieves from taking advantage of your private data. Right. So if your phone gets stolen, then you can always view its location through the web using a secondary device, for example, uh, your friend's phone or uh, via your laptop. So to set this up, go to settings again, then come to Google right here. Okay, come to all settings again, then come to find my device right here and just enable it right here. Okay, then you can open it from the web portal or from the app, which comes pre-installed with your phone. And you can see my Redmi Note 12 here is set up and I can view this device right here. Okay. Yeah. So now it's currently being tracked. If I want to view its real-time location, I'll have to open the web portal. And this is where I'm going to be able to see where my device is currently located. You can see it pins it down right there. We can play a sound. Uh, secure the device or erase the device, right? There you go. Okay. So, yeah, this works if the thief has not removed the SIM card and disconnected the phone from accessing the internet. All right, another feature I like to set up is autofill service from Google. This is a convenience feature which should save you time and memory entering or remembering usernames and passwords to various apps and websites that you log in. It works with uh, the Google Password Manager in the background to store your physical addresses, card details, login details, and all those, you know, uh, details usually filling in a web form, all right? So if you need to turn that on, 
come to settings again okay come to google once again okay all services and then you can tap on autofill right here so autofill with google phone number string uh, sms verification codes right so just make sure that is turned on right all right the bonus feature i would love to show you is actually a battery saving mode right so say you have taken a hike somewhere or you've gone off grid and you hope to be there for quite some time without access to a power source then you really want to turn your phone to the lowest battery consumption mode right you literally want to turn it into a brick feature phone at least for those number of hours or days that you're going to be away from a power source now the way that you do that is you turn on ultra power mode and you can just go to settings here then come to battery batteries right here okay of course you have the battery usage here and uh, the apps that are consuming the most battery but what what you want to do is to turn on ultra battery saver mode here and just say okay now you can see it's dialing down on a lot of uh, functionality and features that are happening uh, so that it gives me that uh, really bare bones there you go so you can see i love this so it, when i'm going off grid going somewhere i turn this on and you know i can receive calls i can take pictures and and so forth but the phone is dialed down to its bare minimum and it's telling me I have up to 61 hours of battery remaining. Imagine that, right? Yeah. Then if I quickly need to like get notifications or check something, send an email, just simply exit. Okay. And then you're back to the normal phone mode, right? Send that email quickly, then get back. So that, that is a live server for me so there you have it these are my top 10 11 ish settings that you can customize and tweak on your redmi phone powered by mi y14 this is mi y14 i know xiaomi is releasing a new skin called hyper os i'm really uh, anxious to try it out but if you have the mi y which is a majority of people then you really want to take advantage of these features and you know tweak your phone to your liking like this so i hope this video has been helpful and if it has give us a like subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon so you get notified of future videos otherwise i'll see you guys in the next one